Um, I'm going to drop in the chat uh, the agenda just for reference if you need to leave early or want to say uh, something, but it's just for reference. Um, so great to see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces. So that's uh, that's exciting. And uh, and so because we have uh, new people, I'm I'm you know just gonna. Do an open call to like if uh, if uh, it's your first uh, community call if you wanna uh, introduce yourself and uh, uh, tell us a bit more uh, about you. Anybody? Yeah. Hi. Uh, it's it's uh, I dropped in halfway through a call another time, but um, also I'm gonna have an announcement later, so I'll just save it for then. But this is sort of my first one. All right. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Um, Patrick. Yeah. Hey, hey all. Uh, I'm uh, Patrick or PatCon. Uh, I'm from Toronto uh, in Canada, and uh, I've, I have a background in civic tech community organizing for the last few years um, and biochemistry way back there and not used anymore. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm following a, a kind of active contributor on a project called Polis lately um, that's used for um, kind of these rad citizen led public consultations in Taiwan. Thanks. Oh, so much um, like subject. So I also wanted to um, like Alex uh, uh, Rendaccio, Alexander in uh, in your name uh, is uh, um, is is going to talk more about a use that we do uh, of poly set radical exchange uh, uh, during the course. So that's uh, um, your feedback would be very very welcome. And uh, um, yeah. Uh, so anybody else? I'm happy to jump in. Um, my name is Gretchen Kruger. Uh, I work on the policy team at OpenAI. Um, I've been really interested in radical exchange for a while, um, and you know, have uh, I'm excited to get a little bit more involved. So this is my first call. Um, I'm doing some research on kind of broader implications of generative models right now, um, and also look at just like far-sighted uh, impacts of technology on society. And so this feels like a really important effort, and I'm excited to get a little bit more involved. Yeah, you are definitely in the right place. Uh, I can hop in and say hi real quick. I've also sort of popped in and out, uh, but can finally attend a full meeting. Good to see you, Matt and Kevin and others. Uh, Taylor Kendall, I'm uh, based in Colorado and work on a project uh, uh, called Learning Economy, basically looking at sort of distributed models around education and employment. So uh, RxC has intersected our work in many ways. In fact, we've got time set up uh, later on to chat, uh, I think with with uh, Matt and Glenn and others around some of the work and where overlap might be with uh, with some broader work with the World Bank, uh, looking at really disrupting education. So glad glad to be here. Good to see familiar faces. Thank you, Taylor. Anybody else who's not shy? <laughs> Hello. I'm Lucas. I'm a student studying econ at Harvard and a CSMIT. So I'm assisting research at Opportunity Insights. And I founded a student nonprofit, Revna. So it's a, a platform for panels, for fellowships, and thon events. So here we have these collaborative hackathons where we use, uh, for example, quadratic voting uh, for data science, for public policy, and really any open source projects for over 5,000 students. So right now we have a triple helix conference series where every month we have an event for about 1,000 students. Brilliant. Thank you, Lucas. Hey, I'm Evans. Hey, um, I work at Consensus. I am a lurker, pretty much. Uh, I'm just interested in, in radical, radical exchange. I've been a part of the mailing list for a while. I've been meaning to attend one of these, so here I am. Thanks for joining. This is, uh, this is great. And another one. Oh my god, so many new people. This is great. I mean, feel free to uh, introduce yourself in the chat or, um, or um, you know, raise your hand later if, uh, if you want to talk uh, about uh, your project. Um, David, because you, you might have to run, you said, like, I think that might be a good segue to, or maybe you did not say you want to, you have to run, but um, like, I know you mentioned uh, in the agenda, um, I mean, in the form for the agenda, like your project uh, and, uh, regarding like AI and like, um, you know, I would love to hear more and, uh, and definitely a lot of people involved in AI in this room. So, uh, can't wait to hear more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to, to tell you guys about that. 
Um, project is maybe not exactly the right word because I, it's, it's not so specific as that. Um, but basically, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody um, that I am going to be starting a tenure track position at Cambridge working on machine learning. And I'm very interested in AI governance and AI ethics and AI safety and how all of these things uh, sort of relate and, um, and relate to some of the ideas in the radical exchange community. Um, so I'll say a little bit more. I'll tell you like a tiny bit about myself and my background, where I'm coming from and my involvement with radical exchange so far. Um, but I guess first I'll just say, yeah, one of the things that I would love to be able to do, although I don't have any concrete idea for, for this right now, is to just make more connections between the radical exchange community and the AI community, and in particular, the AI safety, AI alignment, AI ethics communities. Um, so the people who are working on like making sure that AI has a positive impact and that AI doesn't take over the world and kill everybody. Um, and yeah, so where I'm coming from is I am of the camp uh, of people who think that AI is going to take over the world and kill everybody. Um, so this is, I think, the most important issue in the world. And that's sort of the focus of my, you know, my career and my life is to make that less likely. Um, and I've been interested in that problem for, I don't know, maybe seven to 10 years, roughly. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons I got into the field of AI in the first place. And to me, this has always seemed like more of a governance problem than a technical problem. I think we need something like an effective world government in order to control the use of technology, including AI, but maybe other technologies as well, and make sure that they are being used responsibly and not being used in a way that you know, endangers the, the human species. Um, you can look at this as a classic tragedy of the commons problem where I would be willing to take a very small risk, like maybe a one in a billion chance of destroying the world if it will benefit me tremendously. I'm not saying I personally, but that's sort of maybe the default human attitude. But of course, if everybody has the ability to make that trade off and takes that choice, there's a very good chance that we will in fact destroy the world because there's you know 7 billion of us. And if we each roll a one in a billion chance die, that, that starts to look very likely that we're all gonna die. Um, and yeah, so, so I think when people hear about like world government, they, they immediately get freaked out, right? Because um, they, they imagine something very sort of totalitarian, maybe dystopian. And I think that's a very real concern. And um, we know that you know, AI has the, the possibility to concentrate power dramatically. Um, and so I think you know, what we would really like is we would like a way to solve these sorts of uh, coordination problems and solve you know, tragedy of the commons every time it comes up. Um, and that's sort of what drew me to some of the ideas uh, associated with the radical exchange movement, is I view this as really the most promising way towards having something that is actually you know, ethical, democratic, and um, just for lack of a better word, good, uh, <laughs> that still allows us to sort of solve these kinds of um, you know, global problems and really uh, prevent uh, and, and uh, fend off these kinds of existential risks. Um, yeah, so uh, beside that, I think there's a lot of, you know, so, so I don't know how many people are familiar with this idea or have, have even heard of this idea before outside of a science fiction context that like AI is gonna take over the world and kill everybody. But it's an idea that I think is actually gaining a lot of traction within the AI community. Um, and I've been, you know, harping on this for, for seven years since I started at the University of Montreal. This is uh, working with Yashua Bengio. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm like cutting you, David. I mean, no, I think that's, that we should, we, we, we could really have the entire hour about, about that topic. I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, in, emphasis on, uh, on, on these uh, issues uh, from very different angles. Like I know like Glenn, like you're working on it from a, uh, Microsoft uh, standpoint, there's, uh, we had a recent um, like, like fireside chat, I don't know, like a chat with uh, Audrey Tang, uh, who has her own like uh, way to see assistive versus authoritative um, technology like for AI uh, and ways to like add governance to it, as you mentioned, uh, instead of just the technology. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think uh, I mean, I'll let uh, Matt or Glenn uh, uh, add anything uh, to uh, or Jen like on, on the topic, but 
um, we're really trying to have more workshops like focused uh, on, on, on these ideas um, and, and AI specifically on like specific topics. So, um, so as I see a lot of people, um, you know, especially in, in, in today's call, I think this is uh, uh, probably the next one we are, we're going to start. Um, but that's great to yeah. hear. Um, David, yeah, I, David, are you? Go ahead. So I just wanted to ask her: Are you going to be working with uh, Neil Lawrence at, uh, at um, Cambridge? Or I, I don't have any specific plans to at the moment. We're actually in different departments. I'm in the information engineering department, and he's in the okay. computer science department. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I right. expect I'll definitely be talking to him. You know, from time to time, at least. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to take too long, but I want to take like two more minutes just to say a little bit about my connection to Radical Exchange so far, and and. Uh, and to say that, like, I, I think this idea of like existential risk uh, and is something that really I don't view as opposed to working on the current issues that we're seeing with AI technology and the way that it is impacting people's lives right now. And I think, you know, the, the sort of current social issues that we're seeing. Um, so like, for instance, uh, maybe issues with radicalization and polarization and content recommendation, um, maybe issues with like policing and surveillance um, issues with like data uh, labor. All of this, I think, is sort of really going to flow very smoothly into a situation that ends up uh, uh, leading to, you know, the the destruction of all things that humans value. Um, and I think so. These things are often like viewed as in opposition to each other, or people think that like you can only care about one of these issues at a time. But I really think they're sort of part and parcel of the same general trend. Um, so yeah, how does radical exchange come in? I already said I think it's it's a great, really promising approach to global governance issues. Um, and I really want to build more connections between the, like the radical exchange community and these other communities. I am really excited for people from radical exchange community to reach out to me with ideas for like how we can collaborate, what I can do to help this community. So far, I haven't been as involved as I'd like to. I went to the inaugural meeting in Detroit and met some people there, and that was great. Um, since then, I've been you know just overwhelmed and busy, um, but I have been repping it hard to like everybody every chance I get. And um, really hoping to yeah get get more people interested in radical exchange within the AI and the AI alignment communities as well because I think it really deserves more attention. Um, so that's all I'll say for now. Thanks. One thing is as you know I've been engaging a lot more with that community. Divya and I and others in the community are working on just to reinforce your point. I think to me the key element is not viewing sort of the world governance and the AI is two separate things, but rather viewing these as all a socio-technical system. And it's about the socio-technical system being one that diffuses power and incorporates people and is participative in its design. To me, that that that's the really the right vision. And I actually think in some ways that moves us beyond AI at all. Like I think it's actually a different way of thinking about technology. It's it's thinking about technology as this integrative process. So Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so definitely. I mean, uh, uh, David, I hope uh, this call is uh, is uh, is. Uh, I mean, definitely the first step, and uh, and 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 will engage more uh, on uh, on on this subject uh, definitely. Um, and actually, there is um, a, a project to have a, a page uh, on Radical uh, Exchange website to um, to link more to like. I mean, projects again. I'm using the general term, but uh, project from the community, like to help um, um, having like kind of a project board. Like if you have needs, like you know, if you're searching for someone, uh, or uh, or even just to know about uh, all these projects. I mean, uh, at one point we. You know, can't keep track of like how many projects use quadri quadratic voting and, and so on and so forth. So like really uh, like in, in increasing these connections. Uh, and I'll put in the chat. Um, I'm sorry, I'm bad multitasker, but I will put it in the chat like the form that like if you're looking for a collaborator or fellows or um, a student or uh, etc. Like that. Um, you know, like hope hopefully can help uh, find the right people who are interested in the same thematics. Um, so thank you. Um, uh, any, anybody else want to share like a project, uh, or, um, uh, if we have people from chapters, uh, um, like, so for newcomers, like our radical exchange, uh, foundation is really like a tiny, 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 tiny piece uh, of the puzzle, uh, and really what makes, uh, the lie alive, like the ideas, uh, behind the foundations are the, uh, different local chapters, uh, all around the world. 
Uh, so that's something that is not thematic like AI or like data dignity, but it's really like connecting to local people. And it's, a, it's, a, it's really that that is the core uh, of, of the movement. So really encourage you to, you know, reach out, you know, if there's a chapter near you, or if you want to start a chapter and your contact is Angela, who is here? She's waving. I don't know where she is because everybody has different ties that I learned recently on, on Zoom. But uh, but so so this is a, a very good way to start at least engaging with uh, with people. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so I don't know anybody like is um, um, I don't know uh, from or like has you know want to share what they're currently doing with uh, their chapter. I know we have people from. Berlin from San Francisco chapter from Switzerland. Tom, hi, and and Joe from from Colorado. So um, definitely, if you have an upcoming um, you know project, uh, um, yes, Kevin, go for it. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Iwaki. I'm one of the co-founders of Gitcoin, and basically we're one of the largest quadratic funding applications out there. Our goal, our mission is to fund open source software, which is a 21st century public goods problem. Um, we are working on bringing quadratic funding to the mainstream. We have partnered with Open Collective to launch fundoss.org, which is basically going to take all the tech and game theory that we've prototyped on Gitcoin grants and that we learned from Glenn and Vitalik and Zoe, the radical exchange community. And we're going to be taking it to Mozilla, uh, to the NPM ecosystem, to the Python ecosystem. So basically taking quadratic funding from the crypto ecosystem and bringing it to the mainstream. And so the, the brand for that is going to be fundoss.org. We've got a $75,000 matching pool that we're going to be launching hopefully in the next couple of months. Um, and our developer just made a bunch of money in the crypto bull markets and ghosted us. So if you know React, if you know uh, web development and you want to be a part of one of the strongest quadratic funding teams out there, then hit me up. We're looking for a developer to help get this across the finish line. Um, but we've got we've got the capital, we've got the brand, we've got the partnership, we've got the design for the product. We just need development. So that's where we're at. Gosh, I wish I Thanks had the skill. Been. Such a great project. Uh, put it on Twitter so people can uh, can retweet 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 easily um, as well. I'm sure yeah, that's happens. a great that's a great idea. I will do that. Cool. Um, Great. Um, any anybody else before we we go to the next uh, project? I don't want to, you know, like um, not give you the chance to uh, uh, to mention something. Yeah, re regarding yeah. chapter activities, and here's Leon from Berlin. Um, and today, actually, in one and a half hours, uh, the like some folks from Berlin interested in radical exchange or who are in this area or interested in this area are just going to meet, like to to catch up and and see if we can, you know, do do some more local uh, radical exchange in here. So, I'll just post the Zoom chat, uh, the Zoom link on the chat. It will start at 8 p.m. Berlin time. So just in case you are interested to join. So it's today, Leon? Yeah. Oh, nice. And 90 minutes. <laughs> so many calls you have today. And Leon is too <laughs> modest. Like he's really reviving like the, the Berlin uh, chapter. So um, so if you are, and I, I want to say like, someone asked me once, like if uh, like, you have to live in San Francisco to be like, part of the chapter, like, no, like if you're interested or have lived, you know, somewhere or, I want to focus on the local, um, um, you know, like matter, like really like feel free to, uh, uh, to join. There's no, uh, and there's no one chapter that is the same as, as the other. So that's a, the beauty of it. Uh, we are actually like going to, um, I mean, we, we are, we launched like a discord channel for the, uh, for the chapters to um, be able to communicate uh, between each other. So that's, uh, that's going to be exciting. So. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, I could. I dropped a link in chat, but I could say it out loud. Um, a, a few of us in the Polis kind of contributor community. It's not an official thing, uh, including Divya, who who I believe works with with Glenn, um, have been kind of holding space for 
weekly calls every Saturday to for contributors to Polis. And it's kind of this, the format's a little like we're half introductory, half trying to talk about tech issues, half like creating onboarding material because there's a big lack of it in sharing the things that I think we know from working with it for a while. Um, but yeah, it's an open call if anyone would like to drop in even just for one week, see how it works, you know, try to break our format. <laughs> we might have to re, we're getting to like the seven person limit. Um, we might have to split out, but, um, but yeah, so uh, everyone is welcome. It would be cool. Great to see some faces. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, uh, and we were talking with Patrick earlier that um, like policy is such a, a versatile tool that uh, it's really important to then give examples of like how you can use it because I, I don't think it's very obvious at first like you know like for like the big use cases yes but it can really be applied at like um very different level yes Patrick yeah you know maybe if I could just take a chance I don't think I've actually said what it does it's like an academic it's for consultation but it's like kind of for um a tool that helps people kind of step back to the 10,000 foot view as all all participants are given this ability it's not a privilege of the moderator and kind of understand the 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 deep stories about all the groups that are participating. It, it doesn't reduce it to like, oh, it's me and them and everyone's against me. It like actually like draws out the nuance of the the, the other participants and, and allows a platform to kind of almost create incentives to understand them and to understand their stories, um, you know, to win them over. But yeah, so it's a consensus building tool. Try it, it's a, it's a, it's very, uh, very interesting model. Um, and I, I see Austin, uh, you raised your hand as well. Ah, you're muted. Can't hear you. No. No, still not. All right. Well, uh, if if you manage to uh, get like whenever you uh, you manage, you can uh, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to. <laughs> to talk, um, but I think Patrick, like the um, uh, the mention of police, actually is a, is a good segue um, to um, actually uh, one of our use cases that we're working on uh, and use of uh, of police uh, in uh, one of Radical Exchange's project, uh, which is uh, called Radical Exchange Voice, and I would love for. Uh, Alex, to uh, uh, who is uh, very much working on it, to uh, um, introduce um, the the tool and uh, and tell us about it. Hey everybody, um, yeah, really excited to share this with you. Uh, I've been working really hard on it, and so we wanted to uh, make a quadratic voting tool online, but we wanted to solve a couple problems that quadratic voting itself doesn't address yet. So quadratic, as we know, quadratic voting is great at getting more detailed, a, me, a more detailed image of, of a polity's preferences. But what it doesn't address is A, the problem of who gets to participate in the democratic process, and B, drafting the ballot to vote on using quadratic voting. So we wanted to create a one one size fits all process that covers the whole all, all three of those problems democratically. So that's what we're trying to do with RxC Voice. And I'd like to take a second and just click around the beta version for you right now. So I'll share my screen. Um, oh, I think somebody needs to. Okay, great. Here we go. All right, can everybody see the home screen there? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so this is like the beta version of RxC Voice and this here is kind of our the roadmap of the site. So these are, this is a list of uh, decisions that are being made collectively. So I'm gonna focus on this one here. Um, so these Maybe are the Alex, three- Just going back uh, before you show the tool, like just uh, explaining what, what we, uh, um, what the use of uh, uh, radical exchange voice uh, will be within the the radical exchange movement might be a uh, uh, oh sure yeah clarify. yeah so our first use case for this is going to be to actually draft an agenda for the radical exchange foundation for 2021. So what you know we're going to start we're going to include everybody in the community in this uh in this decision making process to draft the agenda allow everybody per to participate in the in the ballot generation 
sort of crowdsource proposals, and then we'll all vote on it using quadratic voting, and it'll output like an ordered list of um, proposals so that we can we can see people's preferences for different uh, different agenda items. So um, this is a this is a different example here, but this this is sort of the roadmap of how the site works. Um, the first step is delegation, which I mentioned before is about who can who can participate in the process. So it starts out with a, a list of initial delegates. Everybody receives an equal number of voice credits, and then we give everyone the opportunity to transfer credits to one another. So you can sort of delegate influence or power to people who are you you know people who you trust. Um, so that allows the uh, that allows the the pool of participants to be sort of democratically decided. Then we move on to polis, as Patrick was talking about before. We're very excited about about polis, um, and here we're using it to draft the ballot that we'll eventually vote on. So all the people who have been included in the delegation during the delegation stage get to participate in a polis conversation, like you can see here. Um, and anyone can submit like a new proposal that they'd like to be considered or just express their sort of values or feelings about the, about the process. And everybody has the opportunity to agree or disagree. And so I actually have a, the report of a sort of fake process here. And you can see sort of what, what Patrick alluded to, like the power of polis is it, it outputs this detailed information about where, what, what uh, proposals generated the most consensus. And it was, uh, we had a conversation with Audrey last night that was really great. And, and she showed a polis report for, for with a lot of participants. And it was really amazing the way that the, major, the vast majority of, of um, proposals were clustered on the consensus side. And then it had this beautiful tail off into the divisive statements. So anyway, the, pol the power of polis is that it, it shows where, what um, feelings and what proposals there was the most consensus around. And it actually analyzes to like it, it sorts people into groups based on things they disagreed upon, and you can even see areas that the two groups that disagreed very strongly on some things where they actually agreed. So you get a lot of detailed information about consensus. So then, what we'll do from there is we'll have this set of proposals that were crowdsourced basically, and we're going to curate that into a ballot. So the way we'll do that right now, you know, we've, this is something we've been working on. And the, the idea right now is that the sort of administrators of the process, which will be team members from the foundation, will take the top consensus getting proposals and curate them into a ballot. Um, but we're playing with ideas about how we can then sort of loop back in the community to sort of ratify the ballot. And one idea that Matt and I have recently started discussing is to automatically add one proposal to every ballot that says, do you support this ballot as it's currently appearing? And you could set a threshold at which, or if the, if, um, if the, if the output there on the ratification proposal was positive, then the results stand. And if uh, it outputs a negative value, then you would have to redraft the, redraft the ballot and achieve a higher degree of support from the community. So at that point, we have this crowdsourced ballot and we can go to this cool quadratic voting tool here. Um, and these would be, uh, examples of proposals that the community suggested. And I can click around and add votes and see my voice credits disappearing up here and then see the results. Mm 
Does anybody have any questions or? There's a question from uh, anything from else they'd like to hear about in the chat. Um, or more comments. More of a suggestion, but I, yeah. I actually I do have a question as well, which is if I delegate my uh, voice credits to somebody else, do they still like uh, count for me in the sense of like you know the 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 diversity bonus of multiple people supporting the same issue? That's actually something that uh, that we've been like workshopping a lot. Um, the it's it's a it's an interesting issue because there's a lot of different ways to slice the cat or whatever insert your expression here. Um, <laughs> the original idea was that you delegate credits. Oh, I, I actually left out a, thanks for pointing that out. I left out a key point here. Um, all of the voice credit transfers in the delegation stage are matched using quadratic funding. So that's, that's a key element. So one way that you get that, uh, bonus for di like diversity of opinion and consensus is that if I give one voice credit to you, David, and everybody else in the community also gives one voice credit each to you, then you're going to get a very high match from the quadratic fund funding pool. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's one area that that happens. And then it's something else that I've been discussing with a couple people, uh, the consideration of whether you spending my voice credit that I delegated to you should count toward, should count as a vote from you or a vote from me? Because while it's, so, you know, the, the so, obvious. So and, Alex, I, I would just suggest sometime you and I should just have a chat about this. I, I pretty strongly feel that it should not get an additional diversity bonus. And I thought through it a bit, but just in general, it would probably make sense for us to just have a check in about some of the design issues you're facing. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, and uh, and I think the simplest answer is definitely to um, to once the voice credits are delegated, just have everybody's votes count as they stand from that point on, because it's it also is you know gives a clearer output about what people's preferences are for different things. Uh, anybody it's, else? It'd be like double double bonusing it otherwise. <clears throat> yeah. 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 I mean, and we'll have like, this is really just like a, a, a very high level uh, introduction. There will be uh, a lot more uh, and, but remember this is gonna be iterated and, 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 and obviously not everybody, everything will be implemented at first, but this is why like the feedback is, uh, is invaluable. Uh, Lucas had a question. Yeah, uh, how does voting against work here? So are they summed and then subtracted? Or, and then for the proposing, just want to make sure that if there's multiple similar solutions, it doesn't dilute the voting. So to clarify your first question, um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure like exactly what you're asking, but to, I'll just say the way that it works and then maybe that'll clear it up. Um, the, the negative voting is, uh, the so the the quadratic cost is applied in the same way so if i contribute three neg three positive votes to something then i you know square it and it becomes nine and then i add nine and if i contribute three negative votes towards something it becomes negative nine does that answer your question yeah and can i add i think i have part of the answer here Ooh, Matt, uh, Lucas, which is the, so the the problem with uh, you can't hear me. Sorry, I have a bad. I'm having bad connection problems. You're getting, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah it's okay. better. So, um, the uh, the problem of dilution uh, due to similar proposals is the the most important place where that's addressed is in this curation stage. So, in other words, the the results of the polis conversation are curated into a ballot, and part of the one of the values in that curation process would be deduplicating and ensuring that the that the um that the different proposals are essentially distinct and genuinely trading off against each other instead of competing with each other right and and then the the results of that of, of that curation process will be the ballot and one of the as alex was suggesting we're, we're thinking that you know we're not sure yet, but we you know we think that one of the best ways of of dealing with this is that one making one 
of I will. Well, you. on the essentially ratification of the curation process. So that if 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 there isn't, you know, if, oh, can you hear me? Uh, it's choppy. Like the last sentence hello? was choppy. Hello. <laughs> Better. Um, Matt, I think it's too weak for you to try to speak. I, I think it's be, going out too much. Know, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, thank you, uh, Matt, for uh, for clarifying. I think that uh, uh, we'll definitely have like workshop. You know, like if uh, if you want to be part of like the early like beta testers and uh, and uh, and and definitely um, that's how it's going to work. It's really for the community, and uh, and uh, so your feedback will be uh, asked <laughs> and uh, and appreciated. Um, let's go back to uh, Austin. Austin, you said you fixed. Uh, can we hear you now? Can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, you can hear me? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to um, introduce myself. I found out about this meeting uh, through PatCon. Um, he sent something in one of the groups I'm in called uh, Natives in Tech. And so I am the co-founder um, and CEO of a project that I'm working on called Shock Talk which focuses on, um, cre on creating financially sustainable and culturally appropriate patient provider relationships for Native American and Alaska Native people. So, you know, for self-identifying um, uh, indigenous peoples as well as those from federally recognized nations. Um, and I'm also the director of technology at the Urban Indigenous Collective, uh, which is focusing on the public health of uh, urban natives in the tri-state area, so Connecticut, New York, uh, New Jersey. And just a quick piece of where I'm at in terms of Shock Talk as a project, um, been leveraging, uh, been leveraging some you know support desk software to you know boost omni-channel communications. So rolling that out, integrating uh, you know like a messenger bot into like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, iMessage, that kind of a thing, um, and then moving to a React. Uh, you know, probably a React Native front end uh, for iOS and Android. So just wanted to, oh, and also I'm a member of the Chikor and Shakri tribe of uh, South Carolina as well. I'm Shakri Tutelo. Some people call us Chera, broadly call us Tutelo. Um, so just wanted to introduce myself. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, and, uh, and I know you're in your car, but if you uh, can safely uh, type your projects uh, in, uh, or like links uh, in the chat, uh, that would be great. And uh, um, definitely would want to hear more. Uh, and uh, thank you, Austin. Um, Absolutely, I, yeah, thank you. I'll drop those in. Awesome. So after after talking about AI, I, I wanted to bring back like a subject we um, we talked about uh, at our uh, last live stream, which was uh, about uh, data coalition, uh, which was moderated uh, by uh, Crystal, uh, the amazing and unique uh, Crystal uh, Good, and uh, uh, and had uh, Tracy from Controller, who is uh, also part of our fellowship uh, as a, as a panelist, and um, and I'm trying to put the, <laughs> um, the link to the recording in the uh, in the chat, but. Um, so Matt or Jen, uh, you were uh, in the panel, I mean, listening to the panel. Uh, I just wanted to, um, to see if there's something that, um, sorry, that's Matt talking at the panel. Um, if, you, uh, if you wanted to, uh, uh, to mention a few things on that uh, subject, uh, like kind of like lines to, uh, to look at or, um, or just a few pointers uh, for people who haven't uh, attended. Um, And I don't know if Jen, you wanna. Uh, yeah, I guess it's that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there were there were a few things that, and I have Jen. I'm a co-director with Matt at Radical Exchange, and I think the it was great to have the conversation between like somebody that's representing a bit more data dividends and somebody trying to build a data cooperative. Um, one thread, and so I don't know how many of you actually watched it, but they, the person um, moderating also, Crystal Good, she 
she's run for the social media senator, which is like a self self fulfilled role and self created role <clears throat> in Appalachia or Appalachia, and and so she's she's an artist and has also been kind of advocating for data unionization um, in an area which is predominantly former coal mines or currently former uh, coal mines. And so making that distinction and link between the two communities um, or between the two ideas. And so I think that the ideas of and the arguments for data cooperatives and um, data dividends and that we it's not about us individually owning our data, but that we socially um, and collectively create data that makes it valuable as a collective. And <clears throat> so I think that was all very clear, but the one thing that is continually not clear is um, basically the corporate stronghold of databases and data as their property. And that's something that I'm not sure if anybody's thinking about overcoming. And then the other thing was just more like clarity of, it was brought up to join a data coalition. You know, what if you have data coalitions that you advise and want to share with each other, that would probably be very useful as well. Jen, just to add one point on that. Um, I don't know if people saw the move by Oracle yesterday, but they became the, even more clearly than my employer, Microsoft became the first company to like really aggressively come out in favor of data unionization and data dividends, mm -hmm. uh, which people may have whatever feelings they have about Oracle or about Microsoft or whatever, but it was certainly an interesting move to check out the space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll check it out. If anybody, anybody else has thoughts. Do you think it's really, Glenn, do you think it would really advance to the degree that you know we kind of talk about with data dignity, or do you think this would just allow corporations to retain the same power and kind of be able to have some dominance of the market because they're adapting? Maybe you're stuck too. Connectivity issues today. <laughs> It wouldn't be fun without them, you know, <laughs> what would be the point? I mean, they had a lot of like, as you said, Jen, like they had a lot of different um, uh, approaches to the same uh, problem and, uh, and, and to be honest, very, very good speakers as well. So it's like for something that is, can be very complicated and, 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 um, and still you know, in the making, uh, it, it was giving a lot of clarity on like, at least like a few uh, actual things uh, uh, we can uh, we can do. So, uh, so definitely like, uh, I mean, if you have time, watch the panel, but uh, also follow uh, Crystal, uh, Enoch and, uh, and, and Tracy, because there's okay. a lot of great projects. Yes, sorry, do you hear something? I feel like I'm in Clubhouse where like everybody's like, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Where where are you? In the middle, at the bottom? Yeah. Uh, hi, I am Amit. Hi, uh, I wanted to add just that, um, that I think that uh, RxE community should have an open source the repository uh, where people can put in their codes and uh, uh, data and stuff. And if their uh, code is not fully open source, that they can at least put their modules where they uh, use um, uh, radical exchange components in their uh, like uh, uh, codes and uh, algorithms. Also, uh, that uh, um, it's just it's not a uh, um, any personal comment, but just a, a suggestion to the uh, community that uh, uh, currently it's not uh, the community is uh, attracting a lot of uh, people only from like a cryptocurrency ecosystem. Um, so people. Uh, are mostly talking about like uh, NFT, etc., and uh, um, um, coding and etc. But I, I guess that um, if uh, it needs to be remain, uh, if, if it wants to 
become a like a political economy movement then it also should attract like people from academic and also like people from political philosophical and um, political economy background also like uh, um i read a uh, i finished a book from mariana mazzucato recently uh, uh, who wrote about like uh, a book uh, mission economy where she talks about like uh, uh, how if a state wants to build things for um, uh, its society it can um, uh, it can uh, uh, launch uh, several different kinds of projects um, which um, which if uh, they are itself in like uh, which the, if they are democratic in itself then they can um, produce a society that can um, like um, uh, that can be called a, a state but also remains democratic like um, a different uh, sort of economy uh, where a state regulate uh, doesn't regulate but uh, uh, like uh, Builds things that uh, people can use for gen uh, for their uh, in general life. Uh, so uh, I guess that uh, radicalization should should also consider uh, like uh, influencing politicians and uh, uh, other people to um, who want to transform the uh, society in some way. Um, uh, like uh, they are if they are open to new ideas and. Uh, other things that radical action community can provide, then um, I guess uh, um, we should be approaching them and um, ask them to make a, a different transition, take different transitions into their like uh, com um, political manifesto and uh, election manifesto, etc. Yeah, no, thank you, uh, thank you, Amit, uh, for for the feedback. I think uh, there's, uh, I mean, definitely as a uh, um, I mean, we are working with uh, institutions. I mean, that's like, <laughs> unfortunately, don't have time to uh, to go in details. But this is something that we really are careful uh, about. Is that is not, um, you know, there are a lot of people from blockchain in, interested in uh, in radical change for like a more ethical ideas or like you know like broader ideas of decentralization, digital identity, uh, and so on. Uh, but definitely like um, not a blockchain like uh, foundation and and also because we're a foundation like we we can't be uh, political but uh, but there's a lot of work being done by um, I mean by the chapters uh, Matt and Jen uh, and, uh, and and Glenn definitely uh, on uh, uh, working with um, um, you know, like the state of Colorado and like and uh, and institutions to help them uh, work better. And again, like I, you know, this is also very open to new ideas. I mean, I think there's some, you know, we're definitely like pushing uh, some uh, much further, like quadratic funding and and quadratic uh, voting, and uh, but definitely uh, working on other. Uh, projects and uh, and you know for example like AI um, um, definitely is part of it. So thanks uh, thanks for your feedback and uh, and and definitely uh, will uh, it's a it's a good angle. Um, just be mindful of the time. There were a few uh, things I uh, wanted to uh, mention. Uh, well, maybe we can, uh, uh, or Angela, if you can put in the chat like um, just to finish on the data. Uh, side after the panel, uh, Matt uh, uh, published an essay uh, called "The View of the Future of Our Data in uh, Noema." Uh, so definitely a, a good read, and uh, and there's a lot coming up actually in in March. Like a lot of events uh, picking up, obviously uh, remote, uh, but uh, a few things we uh, we wanted to um, um, uh, to let you know. And uh, and I'll put it in the chat as well if I can after or I'll put it in the notes so you'll have them. Uh, so Wednesday uh, today actually, um, Matt, you have um, a, a conversation on data right policy and privacy. Um, I don't know if your internet is better. If you want to say a word about it. Sure, this will just be a, um, uh, a talk with some 
um, policy thinkers and entrepreneurs who are in the uh, in the data union space um, should be a good conversation. So if you're interested in um, in tuning in, please do. Thanks. And it's a uh, five to six uh, EST or PST. Um, I believe that is uh, that's PST. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, PST. Good. Uh, good call. <laughs> good call. Um, and uh, thank you. Uh, and there is a Friday. There's this uh, conference, like one day. Um, and uh, uh, Jen, do you wanna give more details? <clears throat> Why I put the link? Yeah, so one day is a student-led. Uh, community putting on this conference it's not the first time but it will be only virtually held and it's about they're looking primarily at different systems um, that need to change and one aspect is gender equality um, which doesn't need to change but gender inequality needs to change um, food and waste systems and uh, social digital responsibility or responsible digitization. And so the panel that we put together is um, a focus on Taiwan <clears throat> and it has Shu um, Yang Lin who co-founded PDIS and which is Audrey's innovation lab. And it has Cecilia Lee who's an expert on gender equality in Taiwan and like the warm approach. Um, and then there's Yasen um, Huang who's the Taipei leader, chapter leader. And so they're going to be talking about these different things and primarily how um, Taiwan's success has been very much a grassroots effort. So that's, that's going to be, I think it's um, 10.35 a.m. CET. So it might not be a great time for those in Pacific or, yeah, the Pacific Coast. It's uh, but the conference. So that's the time of the panel. But the conference is uh, is the the conference. Yeah, is it goes on for two days or a day and a half? But I haven't looked at the other panels. Yeah, yet. yeah, yeah. So I put the link, and uh, there's also uh, a discount applied. That uh, I think it's Audrey, right? Who shared it with us? Or um, anyway, we have a, a discount for the community. So uh, it's a uh, pretty cheap. Uh, um, um for the for the contents so that's uh, that's very uh nice of them and uh and then one thing next week that we're releasing the third episode of uh radical exchanges podcast uh leon i don't know if you want to um like give a little preview and in the meantime i'll put the link to uh, uh to follow the podcast series so you can be informed uh, the moment it goes live leon. yeah we will we will post this on Tuesday. It's an yeah exciting interview between Jen, who we just met, and um, Tom Adley, who is an environmental uh, and social activist, also a peace activist. And yeah, follow the podcast on all the podcast streaming services that you know um, or use, and and you will see it in your feed. Great, um, they're, they're really, really nice uh, uh, discussions and very uh, thorough um, discussions uh, as well. So uh, highly recommend. Um, and, uh, and then just a, a mention of um, the fact that right now we're uh, the first uh, cohort uh, of the uh, Radical Exchange Fellowship Program is, is happening um, with um, like, like 16 people working on 12 projects uh, around uh, public goods. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, a closing event uh, open to um, everybody on April 1st. This is not a joke. <laughs> like I think we're gonna have to say that a lot. Um, and it's a, it's a demo day on, uh, on the projects that they, uh, they've been working on for the past 10 weeks uh, with the help of uh, radical exchange uh, mentors and uh, and and you know and and the other fellows. So uh, so mark your calendars. Uh, we'll uh, we'll tell you more about it. Um, and did I forget anything? 
two minutes to, uh, or if anybody wants to uh, to do a, a, a great big statement before <laughs> before we we close or. Um, um, Fine, I'll do it. Um, well, so we can we can gain this minute uh, back and uh, before the next call. So um, thank you very much for uh, for being part of the uh, of today's uh, call, and uh, really appreciate you spending the time. Uh, and uh, uh, and Patrick, you said something. Sorry, did not see your hand. It's beige and beige. Just clapping. I'm just doing ah. emotion. Ah, you're clapping. I'm sorry. I can't read. Like it's like I'm just. <laughs> I think we were raising your hand. So, uh, but um, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, and and really, hopefully, uh, uh, I mean, not hopefully. Like, um, let's uh, don't be a stranger, and and we'll uh, definitely um, um, we'll connect uh, again. So, thank you, uh, and uh, have a great great rest of your day. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for hosting. Thanks. See all your faces. Bye. Bye.